Hey, what's up, man? You ready to film today? You're darn right I am. I'm so hyped for the video that I'm going for a 100 pound squat PR. 100 pe per That's personal record, right? Yeah. So you're doing a 100 pound personal record with no safety clips, safety arms, or a spotter? That's right, man. New year, new me. I'm going for it. All in. Okay. Hey everybody, Scott here. Thanks for clicking on today's video. Today I wanna to share with you some home gym tips that help me go from this to this. Before we do that though, I wanna take a minute to say thank you. Editor Alex and I had a goal for this channel to get to 100 subscribers before the end of the year. Thanks to you guys, we're currently at 250 subscribers as of December 31st. Please stay tuned for the new year. We're really excited about the content we have for you. We're gonna be doing some more recipe videos, some diet tip videos, uh, muscle building and training videos, and also we have big plans for a full transformation story video. One of my goals for 2023 is to respond to all of your comments. I think I've responded to all your comments so far, and I wanna continue doing that. So please, if I miss a home gym tip, comment below, what's your favorite home gym tip? Or just comment whatever you want. Comment something silly if you want. See if I respond. Help hold me to my goals, guys. Come on, help me out. All right, thanks. Let's get to the home gym. All right, so here we are back in the 70 square foot tiny home gym. Um, as promised in the last video, I wanted to show you guys how I do uh, dips. I do not have a dip bar attachment. You can get a dip bar, atta a dip bar attachment for about $100 on uh, Amazon, I believe. Check it out, there might be different ones. There's, they do make one for this rack, but I have a cheaper, uh, easier way to do it. Thank you to Simon Miller for this tip. I actually saw him give this as a uh, uh, gym tip for a commercial gym where it would work. He was saying that the dip bar is always full so you can do this to not wait. It does work really well in a home gym too though. We're gonna take our uh, sub spotter arms for the rack, the support arms, and put them at a height. It's gonna vary depending on your height, but I usually use this height here. Yep. Be sure to be safe when you're doing this. Make sure they're locked into place. Don't do anything unsafe in your home gym. But then we can take our barbell, put it on one side, tie it against those bars. And then we have a piece of thick metal conduit. Um, this was in the scrap bin in my um, scrap metal recycling at my work. So I grabbed it out of there. You could probably get something like this uh, metal pipe from Home Depot for like $10. So. Um, you can put that on this side and then you can just prop yourself up and knock out some dips. I use this uh, multiple times a week typically. It's been the best way I've found to do dips at home. I really love that exercise. I think I get great activation and connection with it. So give this a try. It might work well for you. All right, so the next tip is going to sound a little odd because you actually need to go to the hardware store. What is that? You hear that? Sorry, I'm a dad and a homeowner now, so that song is never far from me. Okay, okay. mending plates. These are great if you have uh, something like me, like horse stall mats or another type of gym floor mat. Um, I actually got this tip from Alan Thrall. Be sure to check out his channel if you haven't. Uh, really great content. But what happens with these um, floor mats a lot of times is they separate. They'll end up pulling apart and it's really annoying. There are gonna be gaps in the floor and then you have to move everything off of them to get them back together. So I have, I think three or four of these um, down underneath. These are, it's called a mending plate. It's actually for, to keep roofing beams um, together, I believe. Um, they're about a dollar at Ace or Home Depot or hardware store. Um, so it's pretty simple. You just, when you're putting your mats down for the first time, try to center this as best you can. And then just gotta stomp it down. A little dumbbell hammer technique. Yeah, I've been using mending plates the entire time I've had this gym and I've never had my format separate. So it's really awesome, give it a try. The next tip I have is to reset your home gym after each use. 
Uh, I think this is important because it helps keep things tidy and also is better for safety so you don't have tripping hazards. Also, most people who have a home gym are doing it for the time saving. So you don't want to be looking around for all your equipment every time you work out. You want to have a clean, succinct place that you know where it is every time. Um, there's a few people that use this home gym and everyone knows that this is the home gym reset point. So whatever you do, do whatever you want with the equipment, but make sure the barbell's back in its place, all the dumbbells and plates are back on their spot, um, and everything is in the reset for the next workout. The next tip is to design your home gym based around your fitness goals. Something that I have a tendency to do is watch a lot of home gym videos, and I end up wanting to replicate everything I see in all the videos. I didn't have space or money to do that when I designed my home gym. So I had to sit down and, design, and decide what my goals were. I came up with a list of a few goals, but I ultimately decided on one main goal, which for me is building muscle. At the end of the day, a bodybuilding gym, a CrossFit gym, and a strongman gym are all gonna look different. Let your goals determine your design. My next tip is to build your home gym in phases. When I started out, I knew that I wanted to have a squat rack, a good barbell, and some plates. After that, I added dumbbells as I had money for them and moved on to some resistance bands. What I'm calling phase two for my home gym is to remove this shelf and add a cable stacking system. Uh, I didn't want to start with a cable stacking system though because I knew that a squat rack was best for my fitness goals. When you're designing your gym, don't let your perfect dream home gym be the enemy of what you can currently afford. Start your home gym small and build from there. My next tip is to search the secondhand market for gym equipment. Also, you can search it a certain way that might be more valuable than you think. I end up searching for things like fitness equipment and be a little bit more vague to try to find cheaper equipment. If you search something like Rogue Ohio Bar, it's probably gonna be cost a little bit more because the person that's selling it is gonna know more about fitness equipment. Try searching in generic terms. Let's take a look at the secondhand market right now to see if we can find any good deals. All right, so we just searched for fitness equipment on Facebook Marketplace. Looks like we have an adjustable bench for free right there. Looks like we've got a cheap elliptical, some assorted weight plates. So there are definitely some good deals to be had on the secondhand market. A lot of the stuff in my home gym came from the secondhand market and was under half price. Um, be sure to search for vague terms like fitness equipment and be sure to search often. You might be surprised what you can find a great deal on. Another tip I have for you is to get rid of things that you don't need. This can help you save space in your gym and also save money to buy things that you will use more in the future. An example of this for myself is this kettlebell grip. This is a grip that uh, attaches to any dumbbell and you can do kettlebell swings or other kettlebell exercise with it. I thought I was gonna use it all the time and it turns out I just don't use it as much as I thought I would. So if this is something that you would like to have, we're actually gonna give it away to you guys. If you comment below, you like the video and you are subscribed to the channel, we will be giving this away. So uh, to enter, comment your Instagram handle and kettle grip giveaway and we'll pick a winner at random. Winner to be announced two weeks after this video is posted. My next tip has to do with lat pull downs. As I said earlier, I'd like to get a cable machine in here someday so I can do a lot more cable movements. But for right now, I just found a way to do some lat pull downs with some things I have on hand. I call them low budget lat pull downs. So we take a band for this. I have a hundred pound fitness gear band that works pretty well. I, I got this from what's it called, Dick's Sporting Goods. And then um, I was looking, originally looking for some, like I wish I had some rings to clip these into. And then I was like, well, what about some uh, clips? So what I've been doing is just clipping, clipping these band clips into these rings and then throwing it over my uh, squat rack over the two, uh, the close grip handles. And then I take that same piece of conduit that I use for dips, put it in to the two handles. Lap pull downs with limited equipment. There's actually quite a few exercises you could do using this method. Be creative, Google some stuff and see what you can figure out that works for your space. All right, everybody, so that's the video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you like the content. Comment below your favorite home gym tips or secrets. Don't forget about the giveaway we're doing for the kettle grip. And please be sure to subscribe for more videos coming soon. Thanks a lot, see you in the next one. All right, this is mid-filming.
the, the joys of a, a garage gym. Oh! Is that the tape or is that his body? Oh, oh my gosh! It's like full of peanut butter. Oh. It's disgusting. Dude, that. Oh! Oh my gosh, that is. That's one of the grossest things I've ever seen. 